we think we're about to enter a phase where the lid's coming off, uh, and not just in price, but in, in technical measurements. You get up into that zone, and you could see gold move hundreds of dollars rapidly. And you could see silver move. I'm not going to predict where it's going to go, but in relation to gold, it's going to beat it on a percentage basis. And it wouldn't shock me that silver's back at its old highs, the 50 buck level. Again, you know, gold's at all time highs, copper's at all time highs, in fact, new highs. Uh, why shouldn't silver be? Silver prices have fallen from a high of $32.51 a peak not reached since December 2012, to around $31.80 per troy ounce as of Wednesday during European trading hours. Investors are reacting to recent comments from Federal Reserve officials who advocate for cautious policy measures. Boston Fed President Susan Collins noted on Tuesday that adjusting interest rates will take time and called for patience. Additionally, Fed Governor Christopher Waller stated that he would need to see several more months of favorable inflation data before supporting a policy easing. According to TD Securities, silver prices could rise further as momentum increases. In a note on Tuesday, senior commodity strategist Daniel Gawley highlighted the bullish outlook due to physical demand outpacing supply. He noted, the last time silver prices broke through $30 per troy ounce, it traded to $50 per troy ounce in less than 10 weeks. Gali emphasized that renewed investor demand, which spurred last week's rally, will continue to support silver by increasing its deficit. He warned, there is a notable risk of some reflexivity in this thesis, as the break north of $30 per troy ounce could plausibly catalyze a substantial amount of ETF buying activity, which could further erode free floating inventories on the LBMA. Momentum structural analyst Michael Oliver agrees this is a pivotal moment for silver and the entire precious metals space. In a recent interview with Natural Resource Stocks, Oliver, a market veteran with decades of experience, argues that all previous parameters for analyzing metals prices and market trends have been nullified, and we are now in a new era of sudden vertical price movements and voracious demand for these metals. We will present clips from Oliver's interview. While you watch the video, please don't forget to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on post notifications for more videos on gold, silver, and other metals. Thank you, and enjoy the video. I think we've begun to probably the most major move in the monetary metals they've ever seen, okay? I think the events of the last, uh, you know, multiple decades have compiled and compiled when we have these continual, you know, boom bust cycles in the money and we had in the stock market, in commodities, et cetera. But finally, I think we've reached a point where excess has gone beyond prior excess. I'm talking right now of the paper asset bubble. It was created between, you know, the 2009 low in the stock market and current highs, which basically are marginally above where they were in 2022. And you can look at them M2 chart. You can look at a Fed funds chart. You can understand, oh, <laughs> no wonder we had a bubble. They exploded the money supply. They gave money away for free out of the last dozen years. Ten of those years, it was effectively free. So, you know, you had a bubble. Okay. Well, the problem is when bubbles break, uh, stock market and some related markets, um, it's very bloody. It's very painful. And not just to people that own stocks, but to every everyday guys, you know, and, and families and Remember 2008 and nine, you didn't have to be an owner of the stock market to get creamed to hurt really bad personally. Well, this time it's going to be worse. And no, the stock market hasn't broken down yet. We think it's topping. We think it's been topping since 2022. Only now is it marginally single digit percents above that high. And we think when that goes, the whole crescendo begins in a more obvious way. But gold is a very smart market. And, you know, it's the mama. Silver, meanwhile, yes, on a percentage basis, is gaining a lot more than gold has in the last few months. And we're just catching up finally. But when you look at its undervaluation to commodities and to gold, it's still very undervalued. Silver's highs in, in the you know, past decades have been $50 and $50. We're trading at 32, 30, 32 area right now. So where well, copper's above the highs, since 2011. Gold's above the high since 2011, but silver's not. Well, you know, either silver's a dog or it's got a lot of catching up to do. And we technically argue that's what's underway. 
is the biggest move now on a percentage basis going forward. Well, gold is the mama, it's leading the pack. Silver is going to have the greatest percentage upside because it's undervalued and various other things. We, we measure, we don't just do that on a gut basis, by the way. MSA uh, measures on a spread basis with momentum of the spread, especially silver versus gold and also the gold miners versus gold because they're also very undervalued as a stock asset category. So we think right now for the next year, especially, uh, if you're only now getting into these markets, uh, focus on silver and the gold miners and the silver miners. The U.S. dollar, USD, appreciated ahead of the release of the Federal Open Market Committee, FOMC, meeting minutes from May 1st, expected to be published on Wednesday, dampening demand for silver. Silver's downside is limited by renewed U.S.-China trade tensions. On Monday, China's Commerce Ministry banned General Atomics Aeronautical Systems, a U.S. company, from import and export activities with China, reflecting ongoing trade conflicts. Additionally, China's measures to stabilize its property sector are boosting safe haven assets like silver. As a result, experts like Oliver are certain that there will be more price rallies for silver and gold. During his interview, Oliver warns against early profit-taking, particularly when a more frenzied rally begins. Let's get back to the video. The dynamics that people measure markets by, especially the gold market, the gold miners, and silver, is based on what they've experienced over the last three and a half years. Everybody who's measuring the technicals now, you know, like RSI or MACD or whatever they're looking at, or Bollinger Bands, they're using the last three years of technical reality as their norm. And it's time for them to throw those out the window because the norm has been broken. We're creating new dynamics, new parameters. Your notion of overbought that was prevalent for the last three years, throw it out the window. We think we're about to enter a phase where the lid's coming off and not just in price, but in, in technical measurements. I think what we're about to see here, uh, copper's part of this too right now. I've just uh, sent out a report on that yesterday, yep. um, looking at long-term price, but also long-term momentum. It's now entering a point on momentum and price where it's saying, hey, you know, I'm, I'm about to accelerate. Was this slovenly sort of upward biased action of the last 10, 12 years in copper and in gold? Uh, remember, we're 1900 plus back in 2011. So, you know, it, it's not like we've really exceeded that by a lot. The angle of ascent is being accelerated above. It's evident on price and it's also evident on momentum, which validates price or pre validated it actually, which tells us that you're about to go vertical. And by vertical, I mean dimensions that people aren't used to. You know, like silver, silver's recently had dollar, dollar 50 days, you know, within a couple hours. It's yeah. a new dynamic. Okay. Gold is, is right now approaching the 2,500 level. Now, you know, I think there's some major brokerage firms that came out with a target, you know, like six months ago. Gold will go to 2,500. Okay. So you can bet there's a whole bunch of people think, oh, look, place to take profits. Okay. We've done some intense work using some long-term metrics. Now, gold recently got above 2,450. Okay. We're like 2,430 right now as we speak. Oh, it's just sitting here congesting for the last few days. You get this beast... The gold market, now it's the mama, so we got to watch it, even though it's not the best place to be, silver will be. But there's some numbers we've got in the upper, starting from the lower 2500s, like 2528 to give you one number. I won't give them all to you because we tell our subscribers the specific numbers. But let's let put it this way, about 3 to 5% above the highs we've just made. And you need to sit back, smack yourself in the face and say, don't take profits. Everybody's eager to take profits. That's all I'm hearing is take your profits. As soon as you take them, you miss it, okay? You get up into that zone and you can see gold move hundreds of dollars rapidly. And you can see silver move. I'm not going to predict where it's going to go, but in relation to gold, it's going to beat it on a percentage basis. And it wouldn't shock me that silver's back at its old highs, the 50 buck level. Again, you know, gold's at all-time highs. Copper's at all-time highs. In fact, new highs. Why shouldn't silver be? Well, the spread argues that's we're headed. We're headed back to blast out the all-time highs. The acceleration phase is about to begin. And if you get up into that zone on gold that I roughly defined, it's saying, 
watch out, put your seatbelt on. Don't even think about taking profits. Uh, you know, I, I'm going to, I'm going to go up vertically and, and dramatically. Michael Oliver has a long-standing price prediction for $8,000 and $160 for gold and silver, respectively. One event he and other analysts say will make this a reality within the next few months is a U.S. Federal Reserve policy reversal. A weaker dollar will contribute to increased demand for silver and other metals and encourage other central banks to ease up on quantitative tightening policies. With the rapidly climbing national debt and deficits, the switch to quantitative easing and more money printing is expected before the end of 2024, which will in fact be very great for the precious metals market. What price levels do you anticipate for gold and silver in the coming year? Please share your comments and observations in the comments section below. Also, ensure you like this video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on post notifications for more videos like this. Thanks for watching.